The fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Did we leave one out? Joy. If you are living with all of these qualities except for joy, you are not living the way God intended. So how important is happiness to God? This is Journey Podcast, a 10 to 15 minute show where you not only learn about the journey of people in the Holy Scriptures, but also go on a journey with them and find God in the end. Well, in reality, it is God who finds you from the very beginning and invites you into the journey. You can listen to Journey Podcast for free, whether it's on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and many others. Journey Podcast, finding the path to God. The first section of this podcast is hearing God speak. And as a disclaimer, nothing in this section is my personal opinion. Everything is taken from the scriptures. You can find the references in the description of this podcast. Now let's begin with the first part, hearing God speak. You've been told that I want for you to be righteous. You've read in my word that I want you to choose the right path. You've been instructed that I want you to do good works from the heart and out of love, which is true. And there's many other things that we can say, but one thing you haven't realized yet is that I want you to be happy. Yes, you heard me. I want you to be happy. This might be an unpopular fact. For those who don't pursue me might think I'm a tyrant. And many, many who go to church think that the more serious you are, the more spiritual. How extreme is that? They ignore that the fruit of the Spirit is also joy. How many people sang and shouted in joy because they placed their trust in me? Have I changed? Do I want people to suppress their passion? Do I want people to live dull and monotonous lives? On the contrary, I want to give you a joy that remains even when there is sorrow. I want you to rejoice and that no one can rob you of that joy. I want to overflow you with joy, peace, and hope. You see, it's more than just having fun. It's about enjoying life. Even when you encounter trials of many kinds, I want you to have pure joy. That's because happiness doesn't come from something external. It comes when you abide in me. All those who take refuge in me will be glad and I will not stop them from singing with joy. I will spread my protection over them to those who love me, that those who love me will rejoice in me. My comfort will bring you joy. Trust in me. Trust in me. You will be joyful. Trust in me. When you do, you will rejoice and be glad in my steadfast love because I have seen your affliction. I have known the distress of your soul. Trust in me. I am your strength. I am your shield. Rejoice, be glad in me, and I will say it again. Be glad. I, the Lord your God, am living among you. I am the mighty Savior. I will take delight in you 
with gladness. With my love, I will calm all of your fears. I will rejoice over you with joyful songs. I want you to be happy, and my gifts are irrevocable. Section two, reflection. There was a time when Moses persisted very boldly in seeing the glory of God, and surprisingly, God was pleased with him. Many years later, many people witnessed the glory of Jesus, and many people believed in him because of the persistence and even tenacity of his mother Mary. You see, a few miles away from Nazareth, there was a small town called Cana. There was a wedding going on. In those times, the host invited as many people as possible, especially distinguished guests and prominent teachers, to weddings that lasted for about seven days. Not all guests would remain for seven days, but it was certainly difficult to predict just how much they needed to prepare in order to provide for all, in case everyone remained. During that wedding. Jesus and his disciples accepted the invitation to be there. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was also there. On the third day of the wedding, the wine ran out. Now, to run out of wine at a wedding was a severe, embarrassing mistake and a major violation in etiquette in a social situation. They would become the joke of the village for years. So the host was responsible to provide his guests with adequate wine, even if the feast lasted seven days. Mary's determination led her not only to ask Jesus to do something about it, because she only said, "They have no more wine." Also, she took it a step further by ordering the servants to do whatever Jesus told them to do. Jesus told the servants to fill the jars with water. Then, after the jars had been filled, he said, "Now take some water and give it to the man in charge of the feast." The servants did as Jesus told them. The man in charge drank some of the water that had now turned into wine. He did not know where the wine had come from, but the servants did. He called the bridegroom over and said, "The best wine is always served first. Then, after the guests have had plenty, the other wine is served." But you have kept the best for last. This was the first miracle of Jesus, and he did it in the village of Cana in Galilee. There, Jesus showed his glory, and his disciples put their faith in him. You may ask now, what does this have to do with me? Well, it has a lot to do with you, and here's why: the gifts of Jesus are always fresh and new. What Jesus does for the soul never fails to give satisfaction and joy. Today, you may have ran out of what you need: resources, forgiveness, love, joy. But God never fails. There's no need to be afraid. Second Corinthians nine eight says, "God is able to make every gift come in abundance to you." So that you may always, under all circumstances, regardless of the need, have complete sufficiency in everything, and have abundance for every good work and act of charity. Each new gift increases your capacity to appreciate and enjoy the blessings of God. He gives grace for grace. There can be no failure of supply. If you abide in Him, the fact that you receive a rich gift today ensures the reception of a richer gift tomorrow. In Jeremiah thirty-one twelve, it was prophesied that people would rejoice in the bounty of the Lord. They would rejoice greatly, grain, the new wine, and it was fulfilled in the wedding at Cana. So today, trust Him. Jesus will provide the joy you need. Just do whatever He tells you. This is the third and final part of the podcast. This is the moment to make your response to God. Tell God 
how you want to abide in him. Tell him how much you want his irrevocable gift. Tell him how you want to trust him more to the point where you are confident that there's no failure in his supply and that tomorrow's gift will be better than today's. Take this moment to make your response to God. This has been Journey Podcast. If you like this episode, feel free to share it with someone you think might need to hear it. And remember that you can listen to this podcast for free in any platform designed for music and podcasts. So thanks for joining and until next time.